This is the Apple Vision Pro and this is the Quest 3 by Meta. Both are mixed reality headsets that are promising to fundamentally change the way we interact with the world. The Apple Vision Pro is $3,500 and the Quest 3 is $500. So they're definitely appealing to a very different price bracket, but they're actually more similar than I would have initially thought they were. And I think there are certain features that the Quest 3 has that I would love Apple to include on their next version and vice versa. The Apple Vision Pro, the first time you put it on, feels like an awe-inspiring experience where most things just work the way you'd expect it to. On the Quest 3, it feels a lot more like what I've experienced VR headsets to be like, but it's still incredibly impressive. And it starts with the hardware. The Apple Vision Pro's display is a 2060 by 3040 resolution, whereas the Quest is 2064 by 2208, which means that the Vision Pro is sharper for every task that you're doing. And also the cameras on the Vision Pro are better, so the pass-through experience feels more real. In terms of the hardware, a lot of people actually prefer the band on the Quest 3 because it distributes the weight a little bit more evenly with the top and the side. It looks a little bit less sleek than the Vision Pro, and I also think it's a little bit more cumbersome to put on and off. But the Vision Pro's band definitely for some people has been causing like a top heavy hurts your face situation. It does also come with a dual loop band out of box if you want to switch it. So the interface for the Apple Vision Pro is Vision OS. The Vision Pro feels like what Mac OS or iPad OS is just in a new way, like a spatial computing way. The Apple Vision Pro also uses your eyes as kind of your cursor, whereas on the Quest 3, it's wherever you position the controllers and it shows a line coming from the controller so you know where you're pointing. So I feel like the Vision Pro is made to be put on and kind of forget that you're wearing it, whereas the Quest 3, I'm very aware that I have it on and that I'm controlling a computer. So we're now outside and this is the Vision Pro's pass-through. Both the Quest 3 and the Vision Pro have 12 milliseconds latency, which means that as I'm doing an action, I can see it in real time. The main difference is that the Vision Pro doesn't have a lot of distortion around the edges like the Quest 3 does. So pass-through, if I were to like pull out my phone and look at it, still looks really good. But another cool way to use a mixed reality headset is for work. So we're gonna go to a WeWork and compare the Vision Pro's workflow to the Quest 3 and see which one is better. So the workflow on the Vision Pro is you can either use Vision OS and then connect like a external keyboard and mouse if you want, but if you have a Mac Pro, you can throw it on, which I'll do right now. And then once the Vision Pro notices that there's a computer in front of you, something that says connect will pop up. And if I just tap into that here, it will now use my MacBook Pro as the main workstation and put a 4K display in front of me that I can control with my hands. A weird quirk right now is that the Vision Pro only allows you to use one display with the MacBook Pro, so you won't be able to get a multiple screen setup, which the Quest does have, but I think the biggest win for Apple here is just the ease of use, quickly being able to connect. On the Quest, by contrast, you have to use an application called Virtual Display, and I'm actually gonna set that up for the first time right now with you. So this is obviously less intuitive than it is on the Vision Pro. The advantage is that you can obviously use this with both Windows and Mac. So Vision Pro would be completely limited to the Apple ecosystem, whereas the Quest is less built in, which is a downside, but the upside is that you're not locked in just to one. All right, so this is coming up with a device unreachable. So future Jacqueline's gonna come in once I figure out how to troubleshoot this and fix it. Okay, future Jacqueline here. Um, my friend Eric, who uses the Quest 3 on a daily basis, just told me about an app called Immersed. I went through the whole setup process of it. The pros of it are that it gives you like these three displays, so it looks cool and you have like the functionality of multitasking. The cons are that it feels very glitchy in like a I could not edit in here type of way. And this is like the brand new MacBook Pro, so it should be quick, but it's also relying on this hardware. Um, and so the combination of like casting that isn't the quickest. Additionally, it was like a little bit annoying to set up in comparison to like the Vision Pro where you just hit connect. I do like the multi-window support and I would love if Apple incorporated that into their software. Also worth noting that Immerse can also be like a co-working spot. And so when I first joined, I didn't realize that and randomly people started talking to me. So I was very confused. So if you try it, keep that in mind. All right, that's it for future Jacqueline. The Apple Vision Pro has 600 apps built in that are specifically made for Vision Pro and then a million apps compatible through both like iPad and iPhone apps. But the Quest 3 has so many games. A lot of them are paid. Beat Saber, which I'm about to play, is a $20 application. You definitely, if you were like the gaming first experience, would probably want to get the Quest. For productivity and other types of apps, then the Apple ecosystem is a little bit more built out. But I'm gonna try a game right now on the Quest. Something that often pops up on the Quest 3 is to create a new boundary or to continue in pass-through mode. So 
the Apple Vision Pro doesn't really have you create a boundary. A boundary is like the Quest kind of laying out the land of the room so it makes sure that you don't hit into anything. On the Vision Pro, it lets you just turn on and off immersion mode. All right, I'm gonna open up an app here. Let me first start screen recording so you can see what I'm seeing. So the remote controls turn into like lightsabers and I'm really blown away by the resolution. Like it actually looks pretty sharp for games and it also feels really quick. What's also nice is that the controllers have taptic feedback in them, so when you hit into something, you can actually feel it. And the App Store is pretty extensive, so if I open up the App Store, there are so many different games that I can play. And I think that's one of my favorite things about the Quest, is that not only can you get immersed in games, you can also play with other people. So I had a friend that got the Quest during COVID and was playing with all of their friends. I'm not the biggest gamer in the world, but I think that it does elevate gaming to another level where even though I'm not great at games and I don't spend a lot of my time playing it, I can still enjoy it because it's such an immersive experience. The Apple Vision Pro has Apple Arcade, which does have some interesting games. So throwing this back on here, I think it's worth noting that both of them need Wi-Fi in order to work. It would be really cool if eventually it had cellular so you could be on the go. If not, if you're on the go, then you kind of have to tether to your own personal hotspot. All right, so I just had to set up the Wi-Fi up in here and this is a perfect example of like, just the ease of use and great multitasking. I was able to have Safari over here and then the main Wi-Fi area over here. And that was just very intuitive and worked really well. So I'm impressed with that. Wi-Fi is now set up and we're going to open up the app store to find a game to play. This one is called Synth Riders and it's opening up Apple Arcade. And what's interesting is by default, this is in a um, AR experience where I can still see my environment pass through. We're on the quest and immediately went to a VR experience. This is almost kind of like Beat Saber, but on the Vision Pro. Does it look insane? <laughs> the reality of what this looks like to everyone else around you is comical. So both the Quest and the Vision Pro have pretty fast processors that make the gaming experience feel really, really nice. And the rendering experience is good too. The Quest 3 actually has a faster refresh rate at 120 hertz, whereas the Vision Pro um, goes from 90 to 110. So if you're really serious into gaming, then the Quest is actually probably the preferred device. But for your casual gamer like me that's playing something like this, the Vision Pro does feel pretty good as well. The second question that this opens up, the curiosity loop, is what is this like for consuming media? And the story is an interesting one. This is one of my favorite WeWorks because there are so many different floors. So we're gonna go now to the fourth floor. The Quest has the YouTube app built in and it has VR capabilities. The Apple Vision Pro actually does not have a YouTube app developed for it. So the workaround is to go to YouTube via Safari. Similarly, the Quest also has Netflix, which the Apple Vision Pro doesn't. But the Apple Vision Pro does have Disney and Apple works in a significant way with Disney Plus. So there are some experiences that are made just for the Vision Pro, which are nice. And then Apple also has Apple TV. So there are Apple TV specific shows and you can obviously watch their whole catalog like Ted Lasso on it. Um, I think because the Quest has been out for longer, there's just more development here. And the Vision Pro doesn't allow for VR capabilities in Safari. So if you're really into VR video, that would be an area that you would miss out on. I think the biggest difference though that I'm noticing throughout the day with all these different use cases is that with the Vision Pro, it's like putting it on and then kind of figuring out what you want to do from there. So it's like logging on to a device. Whereas I feel like with the Quest, when I go on, I'm going on with the intention of playing a game or watching media. With the Vision Pro, I go on and then I see all my applications and I kind of decide from there if I want to message someone or FaceTime someone. And there's a new feature here called Personas, which allows you to get a accurate view of what you look like in FaceTimes. So you scan in your face one time, and then the Vision Pro creates a mock-up of you that uses the cameras to match your facial expressions, whether it be smiling, surprised, your um, speaking. The Quest also has a Persona mode, but it's very different. And I'm actually going to set it up right now to show you. And uh, on the Quest 3, it's called an avatar. So I'm gonna create an avatar. And I think that's a more accurate description versus Persona because it looks like a very fake version of yourself. And what's interesting about this is it's obviously not scanning me in. So it's having me just kind of decide what I look like. Whereas on the Vision Pro, you do get scanned in. So I'm gonna save this for now. Because of the Vision Pro's release and a lot of people like, using it in these real world environments, recently the Meta Quest team on social media has been posting a lot of advertisements using the Quest, for example, in a grocery store. So I gotta go try that and see what it's like. If I were to be shopping with this outside of everyone thinking I'm a little bit of a maniac, to actually pick up something and then like see like the ingredients, for example, the parallaxing on the Quest really comes out, like this is very warped and it's really hard to see any of the specific ingredients, almost impossible. I think that maybe the use case could be like having your grocery list like next to you, but this to me does not seem like a Quest use case. 
Let's try the Vision Pro and see how that compares. All right, throwing this on. Still actually decently difficult to read the ingredients, but much more doable. Like I can see that the first ingredient says organic gluten-free oats. So much more doable. And as I hold it close, it doesn't get super distorted, which I feel like just speaks to how much this just works in a lot of ways. Like a lot of the features you don't even necessarily notice are like great features until you try like the Quest or another VR headset and then you realize how much the improvement has been. And so I feel like Apple getting into this market actually is a win for the overall ecosystem because they're gonna push like the bleeding edge and show us the best of what it can be right now. And then Facebook on the lower end is going to show us what a lot of consumers can get. I think a lot of people cannot spend $3,500 on a headset, but more people can spend 500 and get a similar but worse experience in a lot of ways, but be exposed to the tech. I will say that the Vision Pro has this like magic feeling to it that you just don't get on the Quest. The Quest still feels great, but a lot of the time, like especially with like the eye tracking tech, it just feels like it does exactly what you want it to. And so when I have people try it out, they're pretty blown away. I think that the Quest is a great option though, and it does beat the Vision Pro in terms of gaming performance. There's a lot more games and utility there. So it was an exciting device. I would love to know in the comments which one you prefer. And if you want to see my full day in life review with the Vision Pro, you can click right here and I'll hopefully get to hang out with you in either that video or the next one. Thanks so much for being here. Bye.